I'm Watch Eric and on today's video we're going to be going over what might be my favorite heavy hitter in the game. That watch is the Patek Philippe 5980 in rose gold. So if you've been into watches the last three years, pretty much you'd have to be living under a rock to not have heard about a Nautilus. All you hear is Nautilus, Nautilus. It seems to be that on almost everybody's grail list, there's at least one Nautilus. I tell you what, my favorite Nautilus out of the entire lineup is the 5980 in rose gold. For me, it's just a perfect blend of size, color, dial, complication, you name it, it has it. As opposed to the 5990, which I also like as well, I feel that the dimensions of the 5980 are perfect. Not too thick, not too big. Not that the 5990 is a lot bigger or anything like that, but I do feel it's just a hint thicker. I think that the 5980 is by far probably one of my favorite and most beautiful watches from the brand. The thing about this watch is that I've always been a fan of it, even when they were going for under retail. Yes, surprisingly as it is, six to seven years ago, you could pick up one of these watches right in the beginning. The retail was 82,000 and they were even in the 70s. Hard to believe nowadays considering how high they have gone, but I've always been a fan of the watch. Something about this Nautilus that when you put it on your wrist, it just changes everything, even when it was $75,000. Nowadays, with the recent increase in prices and popularity, you're gonna be looking to pay easily double that price. However, will this watch continue to reign supreme? I will go ahead and say yes. I feel like this is the right heavy hitter for pretty much anybody in any level of the game. Look guys, don't get me wrong. Sure, there's going to be some heavy, complicated pieces, you know, with all sorts of limited productions and crazier retail prices. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a bit more of the standard normal chronos. In my opinion, this is the heaviest hitter of them all. So here are a couple things that I love about this watch. One is the size. I keep going back to that because let me tell you something. Once upon a time, I feel like me and almost everybody wished that the Nautilus was made a little bit bigger. I remember back when I was selling these watches in the very beginning before the rise, many people would see it on Instagram, come in, take their APs off. Most of the times there were offshores or stuff of that nature, which were bigger watches. They would remove the watch and when they would put this Patek on, they almost had, believe it or not, this face of like disappointment. Why? They felt maybe the watch was too small, but back then people were wearing 44 millimeters. So we always said, man, I wish they would make a bigger version of this watch. And that wish came true when they came out with the Patek 5976 40th anniversary. I remember when I saw the release of it, I said, oh my God, they came out with a 42 millimeter. You know, you think initially, what can be better than that? White gold, chronograph, same overall layout as this model, just bigger. But then I tried it on and I did a review on it. And believe it or not, the more I wore the watch, the almost too big and a little bit obnoxious it felt on my wrist. Then when I finally was able to try the 5711 version of the 40th anniversary that came in platinum, and I did a video on that is when I said, this is the one. This is the correct size for the Nautilus. I definitely take back wishing all that time that they would make a bigger one. This is the right size. And I'm not even sure if they themselves believe that they made the right decision with making that 40 millimeter bigger. So if you haven't subscribed to my new channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and don't miss any of the new content. Another thing I love about this watch is the dial. Of course, if maybe we were talking about another brand, they would have hit us with the blue dial, perhaps 
exactly like the one that comes on the two-tone version. But Patek is not like that. They're way too conservative and they just won't give us all of that. This brown chocolateish dial for me just gives it the right touch for any occasion. Blue dial would have looked awesome, but then again, it would be a little bit too sporty where this dial just tends to be very elegant and balanced. If you notice, the 5980 on the leather strap has a silver subdial ring with the red needle. I feel like that complements the watch very well when it contrasts with the leather strap. But this one, however, being full gold on the bracelet, looks perfect with the one solid tone throughout the dial. Just looks balanced and elegant. So enter the Jefe. I've always called this watch the Jefe. For those who don't know what Jefe means at home, it means the boss. I just feel like this watch has always been the boss of the Chrono game. It's just the straight up bully, the bully on the block, when you wanna come in there and flex the real muscle. So what's making this watch so hard to get right now? Well, there's a lot of challenges that surround this watch currently right now. Number one, the fact that four years ago, about five years ago, everyone decided to jump on this bust down, diamond out wave. Of course, as things progressed, there was nowhere for the Patek to hide. They ended up drilling these watches and full paveing them with diamonds. Once you do that to those watches, they'll never be the same. There really is no way to ever go back from that. So of course, with already a limited supply of these watches, because Patek doesn't build watches like Rolex does, where they just pump them out at more of a volume, less and less were available. And as this started happening, the collector started to clamp down on them. I knew one collector that had five of them in his safe. Five, can you believe that? Of course, this is before the prices rose up into the stratosphere, but that's one of the main reasons that the prices went up. There was just less of them around. So that, combined with the fact that Patek caught a rift in the market, they decided to cut back production and that clearly caused the prices to shoot up to the stratosphere. So let's go back to where these watches used to be. The last time that I had one in my possession, it sold for $100,000. And at that moment, it seemed pretty crazy considering that they were as low as 70,000. So from 80 to 100, a 20 grand jump was considered pretty big. I remember that I said around that time that I figured that the ceiling on this watch would be 125. And sure enough, that year we saw it go all the way up to 150. Is it crazy? Well, I don't know. I mean, do they in purposely set the retail prices on these watches lower just for this hype to happen? I mean, think about it. If they made the retail price on this watch, $130,000, and you can get it at the boutique, would people still go and buy them? I'm not sure. Maybe the hype is what's continuing to cause people to pay this dollar amount. But I wonder, if the retail was higher, how much more would it go? So we are where we are today, in 2021. To pick up a watch like this, you're gonna be spending almost $200,000. That's just the facts. You know, I don't think you could pick one up right now for less than 185. Are those numbers crazy? Yes. If you would have told me this back when I stated that 125 was the ceiling, I would have said, no way. However, now that we are here and more things have changed in the market, what I feel is, is that at some point, the 5980 in rose gold will be discontinued. It has happened with all the other models. They come in with another one and out with the old. That new one has to be the 5990 in full rows. It just seems like the obvious play from them. And I think that when they discontinue this watch, we're gonna be at $250,000. Is it crazy? Yes, I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that's what the market is demanding and it could get to that point. Okay, so the watch game. I mean, really, what says more respect my gangster than a 5980 in rose gold? I mean, I don't care who you are. I don't care what it is. You put one of these on and you're immediately initiated into the League of Shadows of the watch game. It just is what it is. 
They're hard to get, expensive to obtain, and trust me, I haven't met too many people out there that would say that they don't like the way a 5980 rose gold looks. It just looks good. It's a pure blend of class and luxury, and you cannot go wrong. And if you wanna show up with a machine gun to a knife fight, you bring a 5980 rose gold. So the conclusion, this is probably my favorite rose gold chrono, hands down. Just like I recommend people sometimes and I say, hey listen, check out this restaurant. It's not the best restaurant in Miami, it's just my favorite restaurant in Miami. And that's the way I feel about the 5980. It might not be the hardest watch in the entire watch game, but it's one of my favorites. So comment below if you agree or disagree with me about the 5980's status in the watch game. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my new channel.